Hello, my name is Thain and I like to experiment with AI art. In this video I will again show you 5 word combinations for Midjourney version 5.1 that really make the images look different from the default. They may have some characteristics still in common with the default style, but some things are definitely different. I got these from the slash describe feature of Midjourney and decided to just test them out one by one what they come up with. So the first style of this video is going to be painting with many different patterns and lines. And we sure do get a lot of patterns and lines, almost to the point that they are just overwhelming. The common theme is the maximalism. Meaning there is just so much stuff in there. But I feel like there is something abstract going on in combination with cubism and some kind of a collage type of art. I apologize that my knowledge and recognition of art styles is not that great, but I'm learning every day as well. Combined with landscapes, we get really colorful stuff there and also some patterns overlaid to the landscapes. The animals are more towards the default style or at least something I have already seen quite often. Macro images are very interesting, some cubism going on in there and also just weird abstract patterns. Cities look as chaotic as always with this style. Interiors have all kinds of patterns going on everywhere, all kinds of things mixed that normally don't go together that well. But it's so chaotic and interesting that it actually doesn't look that bad. Architecture bears a very slight resemblance of architecture, it's more towards abstract doodles that happen to resemble a bunch of houses stacked on top of each other. Portraits also have the patterns going on everywhere, certainly different. Fantasy has some more flowy lines, flowers and even a castle, but the images are so busy which is what Midjourney version 5.1 tends to do. Sci-Fi 2 has some futuristic space stations or cities. They look different from the usual sci-fi images, but they are really overloaded with all the details so it's hard to make any clear sense of them. Next up is detailed pen strokes. Now this is a style that really benefits from all of the detail that Midjourney version 5.1 wants to add to everything. We get some really intricate stuff there that may need some additional negative prompts there like dash dash no pen or hand. So I went ahead and did that and got these as results. No pens or hands here. The images have changed somewhat. But if you go back and compare, some of the lighter and darker areas and some objects are still in the same places when you use the exact same seed. The prompt itself is now changed, because one part of it has changed, but there still are some similarities. Overall I think the pen and hand issue is not that bad with the 916 aspect ratio. The landscapes don't have any and are beautifully intricate. The animals look great too. The maximalism doesn't bother me in black and white as much as it does when the images are colored. There seems to be something akin to a pen in one of the macro images though, but otherwise very interesting abstract looking stuff there. Even cities look better than they usually do. Interior has some old staircases appearing a lot. Architecture does seem to have the pen at hand appearing in two of the images. The lower left one actually looks like a sketch of a real house for a change. I really like these portraits, they have kind of a grunge Y vibe to them. The skin is not as clear as it usually is and should be so it's looking different to me. Fantasy is A has some nice landscapes there, the castle tree house I think I have seen before with color. Sci-fi has some detailed stuff there, strangely no space suited people this time. Now we move on to our third style, which is a combination of colors. Dark cyan and pink. I think this word combination produces some really nice images. I love all of the pink flowers that seem to be appearing and the dark cyan tone looks great too. For landscapes it gives kind of an alien look. The lower left one actually could be an image from an alien planet because those trees don't look like natural trees. 
The wildlife is getting some flowers around them too. Strangely, I haven't noticed Midjourney version 5.1 coloring the animals in an unusual color like the 5.0 version did, but for these it seems that it has done exactly that. But luckily they don't look weird, I actually really like these. Macro seems to be doing close-ups of some flowers that have quite unusual colors. Cities look mostly like they always do. Interiors have some nice cyberpunk feel going on, it must be these colors. Architecture is different from its usual shenanigans, but I don't especially like these. The portraits look really great. I like how for the lower left image the pink is a color reflected on the face from below. Fantasy looks nice too, I like the butterflies in the top right image. Sci-fi is more towards its usual style, but the lower ones look a bit different, kind of characters exploring a video game world. Now we move on to our fourth style. Futurist Gothic. And I really like what has happened here. On the background we seem to be seeing a lot of gothic architecture. But in the foreground we see some futuristic goth fashion and models. So many sunglasses. For landscapes I guess the gothic architecture is really a strong reference point here, so we see more architecture than landscapes. But I love the lower right one, the reflection is just perfect on it, well on all of them. But the orange starry sky also just makes the image look so special. The wildlife is looking really strange. We get some mechanical deer. Macro has again those models with sunglasses and some more gothic architecture in the background. Some of it is even futuristic. I don't seem to enjoy the city images at all basically ever. I might have to switch it up to something else that represents an urban environment a little better when Midjourney version 6 comes along. The interiors look kind of odd, like somebody has moved into a church and set up their sofa where the altar is usually located. The architecture images look quite nice. A perfect mix of gothic architecture and futurism. I especially like the dreaminess of the top right image. Portraits again have some really great fashion and some sunglasses. As does fantasy, except the fantasy part is quite overpowered, so there's nothing really fantasy-like left there. Sci-fi too is more influenced by the gothic or goth style. Maybe just smoother fabrics. I really like the top left image there, really atmospheric. And for the last style of this video we have simply sketch of a drawing with red and blue lines. And it seems to be doing exactly that, red and blue lines. At times it seems to be drawing some faces, but most of the time the lines look quite abstract. The landscape images look very cool. They're a lot simpler than what 5.1 usually tends to do. But these landscapes are really reminiscent of the 5.0 model if you look at the composition of them. I remember seeing similar looking images when I experimented with color words. But this phrase does include red and blue so it could be that. Really nice and detailed elephants there. And simply abstract red and blue lines in macro. I am still not loving what city brings in, although these look okay. Interiors remind me of sketches that I attempted to do as part of my art studies once upon a time, kind of a perspective view of hallways. Architecture seems to be having some of that too, but I guess the lower right one is the only one that could be recognizable as a building. Portraits too look like kind of sketches, colored with some red and blue. Fantasy has portraits there too, but compared to other things that have more straight lines going on everywhere, these have basically all curved lines. And sci-fi has some nice spacesuit sketches. That was another quick look at some cool styles I have discovered and thought looked different from the usual. I hope you got inspired to try these out yourself with all kinds of other subject matter. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. 
and like and comment too, those are always nice. I try to respond as much as possible whenever I have something to say. Thank you for all of the positive feedback, it's always hard for me to respond in a meaningful way that represents my gratefulness for those comments. But be assured that they keep me going and inspire me to continue on with these experiments despite some really busy times in my personal life. Anyway, I also thank you for watching, and let's continue prompting.